Welcome to your audience students and scholars here. I am Dr. Amjad Ali, dear scholar. In our previous video, we have uh, developed the Mandel Fleming model. In this video, we are going to discuss the small open economy under floating exchange rates, the Mandel Fleming model. Dear scholars, before analyzing the impact of policies uh, in an open economy, we must specify the international monetary system in which the country has chosen to operate. That is, we must must consider how people engaged in international trade and finance uh, can convert the currency of one country into the currency of an other country. We start our discussion with floating exchange rate. We start with the system relevant for, uh, for most major economies today that is floating exchange rates. Under a system of floating exchange rates, uh, the exchange rate is set by market forces and is allowed to fluctuate and respond uh, to uh, changing the economic conditions. In this case, the exchange rate E adjusts to achieve simultaneous equilibrium in the goods market and the money market. When something happens to change that equilibrium the exchange rate is allowed to move to a new equilibrium value let's now consider three policies that can change the equilibrium uh, level of the economy that is the fiscal policy monetary policy and trade policy our goal is to use the Mandel Fleming model is to show the impact of policy changes and to understand the economic forces at work uh, as the economy moves from one equilibrium to an other equilibrium. So let's discuss our first uh, policy that is fiscal policy. Okay, suppose that the government uh, stimulates uh, domestic spending by increasing government purchases or by cutting taxes because such expansionary fiscal policy increases planned expenditure it shifts uh, the is steady curve to the right world so here we have one of the main question that uh, what are the economic forces that lies behind the different outcome to answer this question we must think through what is happening to the international flow of capital and implications of these capital flows for the domestic economy so let's see a graphical presentation that uh, of fiscal expansion under floating exchange rate we have income output y on x-axis we have exchange rate e on y-axis we have a vertical uh, uh, LM curve that is LM steric and we have a downward sloping IS curve IS steric 1. The intersection of the IS and LM curve will decide the equilibrium level of uh, income and uh, uh, the level of exchange rate. So here we have the expansionary fiscal policy that shifts uh, the IS curve to IS uh, uh, static 2. So we have an expansionary fiscal policy and that f uh, expansionary fiscal policy will also raises our exchange rate from this point to this point. So an increase in government purchases uh, or decrease in taxes shifted the IS steric curve to the rightward. This raised the exchange rate but has no effect on income. So we have uh, uh, same level of national income. So here uh, one of the main thing to notice uh, that the fiscal policy has different uh, effects in a small open economy than it does in closed economy. In the closed economy, IS and LM model of fiscal expansion raises the income whereas in a small open economy where the floating exchange rate of fiscal expansion leave the national income unchanged. So uh, uh, mechanically the difference uh, arises because 
we have lm steric uh, vertical while the lm curve uh, uh, of the closed economy we have a upward sloping lm curve but this explanation is not very satisfying we have to uh, give the more details about the fiscal policy so let's discuss the fiscal policy further the interest rate and the exchange rates are the key variable in the story when income rises in closed economy the interest rate rises because higher income increases the demand for money that is not possible in a small open economy because as soon as the interest rate starts to rise above the world interest rate are static capital quickly flows uh, in from abroad and uh, to take advantage uh, of the higher return as this capital inflow pushes the interest rate back to uh, our static that is world interest rate it also uh, has an other effect because uh, foreign investors need to buy the domestic currency to invest in the domestic economy the capital inflow increases the demand for the domestic currency in the market for the foreign currency exchange bidding up uh, the value of the domestic currency so the appreciation of the domestic currency makes the uh, domestic uh, goods expensive relative to foreign goods reducing net exports uh, the foreign net exports exactly offset the effects of the expansionary fiscal policy on income so here we have one of the main question which arises here that uh, why is the fall in uh, uh, net exports so great that uh, it uh, renders the fiscal policy powerless uh, to influence the income to answer this question consider the equation that uh, describes uh, the money market we have uh, here uh, m over p is e is equal to l r y so we know that uh, this equation presents the uh, real money balances is uh, positively related to income and negatively related to interest rate okay in both closed and open economies the quantity of real uh, money balances supplied m over p is fixed by the central bank which sets uh, m and the assumption of sticky prices which fixes p the quantity demanded determined uh, by r and y must equals uh, this uh, fixed supply in a closed economy a fiscal expansion causes the equilibrium interest rate to rise so while talking about uh, why is the uh, uh, why is the fall in the net exports uh, so great that it renders the fiscal policy powerless to influence income okay this increase in interest rate which reduces the quantity of money demanded implies uh, an increase in equilibrium income which raises the quantity of uh, money demanded these two effects together maintain equilibrium in the money market okay by contrast in a small open economy r is fixed at are static that is domestic interest rate and that is world interest rate so there is only one level of income that can satisfy this equation and this level of income does not change when fiscal policy changes thus when the government increases spending or cuts taxes uh, the appreciation of the currency and the fall in net exports must be large enough to offset fully the expansionary effect of the policy on income the second uh, policy is uh, related to the monetary policy okay suppose now that the central bank uh, increases the money supply because the price level is assumed to be fixed the increase in the money supply means an increase in real money balances the increase in real money balances shifts the lm steric curve to the rightward 
Hence, an increase in the money supply raises the income and lowers the exchange rate. So, how does monetary policy influence the spending? That is more important question here. Okay, to answer this question, we once again need to think about the international flow of capital and its implication for the domestic economy. So let's see a graphical presentation for that. We have a monetary expansion under floating exchange rate. We have income output Y on X axis. We have exchange rate E on Y axis. We have a vertical uh, LM static LM static 1 and we have a downward sloping IS static and we know that the intersection of uh, LM and IS curve will decide the exchange rate of the economy will decide the national income of the economy no a monetary expansion shifted the LM static curve to the rightward so we have LM static a new LM static 2 and we know that the intersection of the LM and uh, IS curve will decide the equilibrium level of national income and uh, exchange rate of the economy so the expansion in monetary policy uh, will uh, shift the national income upward but it will lower the exchange rate from this point to this point and we have a rise in national income from this point to this point so although monetary policy influence uh, the income in an open economy as it does in closed economy the monetary transmission mechanism is different we can uh, recall that in closed economy an increase in money supply increases spending because it lowers the interest rate and stimulates the investment in a small open economy this channel of monetary transmission is not uh, available because interest rate is fixed uh, by the world interest rate so the interest rate and exchange rate are again the key variable as soon as an increase in money supply starts putting downward pressure on the domestic interest rate capital uh, flows out of the economy and investors seeks a higher return elsewhere so this uh, capital outflow prevents the domestic interest rate from falling below the world interest rate or static it also has another effect because investing abroad requires converting domestic currency into foreign currency the capital outflow increases the supply of domestic currency in the market for the foreign currency exchange causing the domestic currency to uh, depreciate in value this uh, depreciation make domestic goods inexpensive relative to foreign goods stimulates uh, net exports and thus the total income uh, has a rise hence in a small open economy monetary policy influences income by altering the exchange rate rather than interest rate so let's move to the other policy uh, for the floating exchange rate that is uh, trade policy suppose that government reduces the demand for imported goods by imposing an import quota or tariff here we have one of the main questions that what happens to aggregate income and the exchange rate okay the other question is that how does the economy reach uh, its new equilibrium because that exports equal exports minus imports a reduction in imports means an increase in net exports that is the net exports schedule shift to the right okay often a stated goal of policies to restrict trade is uh, to alter the trade balance uh, and x 
yet such policies uh, do not necessarily have uh, that effect. The same conclusions holds in the Mundell Fleming model under floating exchange rate. Recall that we have a net exports uh, is equal to y minus c into y minus t minus i r static minus g. So here, because uh, trade restriction does not affect income, consumption, investment or government purchases, it does not affect the trade balance. Although the shift in the net exports schedule tends to rise the net exports, the increase in exchange rate reduces the net exports by the same amount. The overall effect is simply less trade. The domestic economy imports less uh, uh, than it uh, previously did before the trade restriction, but it its exports uh, less as well. So let's see a graphical presentation. A trade restriction under floating exchange rate. We have uh, first panel is related to the shift in net export schedule and we have uh, net exports on our x-axis, we have exchange rate on y-axis, we have a downward sloping curve for the net exports, nx1. So a trade restriction shifted the net export curve outward. We have a new net export curve, nx2, and the second panel, panel B, is the change in the economy's equilibrium. And we have income output Y on X axis, exchange rate on Y axis. We have a, word, a downward sloping IS curve, IS static one. And we have a vertical LM curve, LM static. And we know that the intersection of IS and LM curve will decide the exchange rate and national income of the economy. So uh, a trade restriction uh, will uh, in this part will uh, also shift the IS tariff curve to outward and we have a IS tariff 2 here and this IS tariff intersect the LM curve on this point, this will show we have an increasing exchange rate. We have an increase in exchange rate from this exchange rate to this exchange rate. But this will remain our national income at the same point. So the shift in the net export schedule increases planned expenditure and thus uh, moves the IS curve to the right because LM static here is a vertical the trade restriction raises the exchange rate but does not affect income. The economic forces behind this uh, transition are similar in the case of uh, expansionary fiscal policy because net exports are a component of GDP. The rightward shift in the net export schedule uh, uh, other things equal puts upward pressure on the national income and increase in income in turn increases money supply or, or money demand and puts uh, upward pressure on the interest rate R. Foreign capital quickly responds by flowing into the domestic economy pushing the interest rate back to the world interest rate R static and causing the domestic currency to appreciate in value. Finally, uh, appreciation of the currency makes domestic goods uh, more expensive relative to foreign goods which decreases net exports uh, and X and return uh, income Y uh, to its national uh, or initial level. So this reveals that a tariff or a quota uh, uh, shifted the net export schedule uh, to the rightward and as a result IS curve uh, shift to the rightward and raising the exchange rate and leaving the national income unchanged.
are same. So this is all about the a small open economy under floating exchange rate for the Mandel Fleming model. So see you for the other extension for the Mandel Fleming model in another video. Ciao.